Hello, my name is Bill Kinney, and this is my second video on doing proofs in real analysis. I'll provide a link here to my first video. At the end of this video, I'll also provide a link to a lecture series I did for a class on real analysis for the fall of 2016. Um, in the first video, I proved that square roots of non-perfect squares are irrational. In this video, I want to prove that certain kinds of logarithms, not every logarithm, but certain logarithms are irrational. So I'm going to suppose I've got two numbers here, a and b. They're elements of n, which stands for the set of natural numbers. Also, you could label that as z plus. z stands for Zahlen, German word for numbers. It's the set of integers, and if I put a plus sign there, that means positive integers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. I'm using both notations just to emphasize that I could. I, you really don't have to use both. You can choose one or the other. I'm going to go ahead and assume that a and b are both bigger than 1. They are greater than or equal to 2. And I'm going to suppose an extra assumption that either a or b has a prime divisor, also known as a prime factor, that the other one doesn't. One of them has a prime divisor that the other doesn't. Prove that in this situation, if you've got a real number that satisfies the equation b to the x equals a, then that number must not be rational, it must be irrational. Such a number would be called log base b of a, and it would therefore be proving that it's an element of the set of real numbers, but not the rationals. This is a set minus notation, r set minus q. Elements of this are real, but not rational. They are what we call irrational. There are plenty of logarithms that are rational. Uh, for example, log base 2 of 8 is 3. Log base 9 of 3 is 1 half. Log base 9 of 27 is 3 halves. Certainly there are plenty of logarithms that are rational, so we need some sort of condition, and this is one condition. Uh, situations where this would happen would be when a and b are prime, distinct primes, or relatively prime, their greatest common divisor would be 1, or even if their greatest common divisor was less than both of them, would be situations where they have a prime divisor where the other one doesn't. Um, I should also say, before I start the proof here, that I am not proving the existence of these kinds of logarithms. That's harder. I'm only proving that if such a logarithm exists, if such an x exists, then it must be irrational in this situation. Just like in video number one, it's going to be a proof by contradiction. I'm going to assume the opposite of what I want to show. Assume to the contrary. Contrary is what I'm trying to write here. That x, in fact, is rational. It is an element of the set of rationals. Q stands for quotients, by the way. Rationals are quotients of integers. R stands for reals. Um, say x equals c over d, where c and d can be taken to be positive integers. Let me just go ahead and write z plus here. And that assumption implicitly takes care of the case where d is zero. zero. I don't want d to be zero. I'm not going to divide by zero here. So that assumes d is not zero. And they can be taken to be positive here because raising d to a negative number would give you a number less than a 1, for example. In the last video, it was real important that I also assume that c over d was completely reduced, that the gcd, greatest common divisor, or you could call it gcf, or greatest common factor of c and d, was 1. That's actually not necessary to do in this proof. It was essential in the last proof. But we don't need to do it here, so I won't bother. Okay? So if this assumption to the contrary leads to some sort of logical contradiction, that means the assumption must be wrong. And therefore, x cannot be an element of q. It must be a, an irrational number instead of rational. All right, what can you say from this? Um, well, the first thing you could say is something pretty obvious. You can go ahead and replace the x with c over d in this equation. This means b to the c over d power equals a. And this is perhaps the point where you might feel most stuck. What do I do with this? What can I do with this? A, B, C, and D are all positive integers. One little hint about what to do is you might want to get rid of this fraction somehow. How could you get rid of that fraction C over D? Well, maybe how about raising both sides to the D power? 
this equality is going to mean if I raise both sides to the d power that I get the same thing. And when you do proofs in real analysis, you want to prove, assume you know everything there is to know about things, unless told otherwise, with integers and with rational numbers, and you know the properties of exponents when the exponents are rational are going to hold. That means you need to multiply these exponents. c over d times d will be c. The d's will cancel. So this implies that b to the c equals a to the d. Okay, and once again we hit a spot where we're like, okay, scratching our heads, what do we do now? Uh, and a light bulb should go on, hopefully, that, oh, I need to use my extra assumption here. Either A or B has a prime divisor that the other doesn't. All right, say it's A. Without loss of generality, my assumptions mean... A has a prime divisor uh, call it P that B does not have so P is a prime number that divides into A it's a factor of A and not of B it's not a prime divisor of B it's not a prime factor of B Say, oh, a equals p times m for some positive integer m. Uh, is m, uh, pr does p, is p a uh, factor of m? Uh, maybe, maybe not. It doesn't really matter. Um, this is enough, okay? And I think once you get to this point, it should be pretty clear what to do. Go ahead and replace a with p times m up here. Therefore, b to the c equals p times m to the d, which is p to the d times m to the d. And even if you don't know what to say at this point, I hope it's pretty clear that this essentially is your contradiction. What does this contradict? This contradicts, if you want to be technical about it, contradicts the FTA, this standing for Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic. FTA could also stand for Fundamental Theorem of Algebra, which is about roots of polynomials, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic. Maybe you want to write that out completely. Unique prime factorization of positive integers up to orders of the factors. This contradicts that. Why? Well, it's saying that P is a prime factor of B to the C which would mean it's a prime factor of b as well. But hey, b, p is not a prime factor of b. That's a contradiction. Say that again. This equality would mean that p is a prime factor of b to the c. And if it's a prime factor of a positive integer power of b, it's got to be a prime factor of b itself. Think about that. There's no other way it can happen. But I know p is not a prime factor of b. So there's our contradiction. Maybe you want to go ahead and make two arrows pointing at each other. Contradiction. Therefore, my original assumption to the contrary must be false. Therefore, x must be irrational. It must be an element of the set of real numbers, but not the rationals. Set of irrational numbers. When mathematicians finish proofs, they get all excited. You, I'm sure you are too when you finish a proof. And they do funny things. They sometimes put double slashes to say they're finished, or maybe a box, or maybe a filled-in box, or maybe a smiley face, or maybe they start talking in Latin sometimes. They put Q-E-D in Latin that I believe stands for Quad Erat Demonstrandum, which means I demonstrated what I wanted to. And if you believe in God like I do, you could also put PTL for Praise the Lord. We have finished this proof of this fact up here, and that's pretty cool.